Hi, this is Neville Hobson in the UK, and today is Saturday, January the 28th, 2012. Uh, I'm going to talk for the next few minutes about the Scroll XL 7-inch tablet PC running Android, a device I've had from the UK supplier Storage Options for the last 10 days or so, uh, just to play around with it and uh, form some impressions. Um, I did have a device from Storage Options last year, the predecessor to this one, and I wasn't frankly too impressed with it. Uh, indeed, the review I wrote at the time said all that. This device, however, is really very good indeed by comparison. Let me say that right up front. I'm very impressed with this. It's a delight compared to that previous one. So let's take a look at it. And uh, as you can see, a tablet, a slab of black as it looks from when you see it on the front. Some buttons there, not unlike most other tablets. Let me pick it up and show you some aspects of it. A nice thick uh, thickness to it, substantial feeling to it. It weighs a bit, I must admit, but it's a delightful build quality. I do like this particular model I have at the back. It's white. There you see some information about the device. And indeed, along the bottom, we've got a headphone jack, uh, a slot for uh, an external storage card, a micro SD card, what it calls a TF card. We have a port for HDMI video and then a reset button. I haven't tried video yet, by the way, but that's next on my list. Genuine high definition 1080. Uh, then a port for the USB cable through which you synchronize uh, or rather copy files, etc., from to and from a computer, and um, the uh, power supply. Over there is the uh, loudspeaker. This side we've got the volume controls for the audio and the on off button. And then on the front is a 0 0.3 megapixel uh, camera. Uh, which, uh, unless you're in strong light, it's very grainy. It's a pretty pretty low resolution. Um, overall, the device is quite powerful uh, compared to the predecessor. Let me hasten to say uh, that I'll show you that in a second. You can see for yourself. Get one gigahertz uh, processor. It has half a gig of internal memory and four gigs of inbuilt internal storage. Plus, of course, uh, that expansion. So you could install, I suspect, up to 32 gigs in a micro SD card. And that gives you plenty on a device that has a high resolution screen, 7 inch capacitive touchscreen, all those features, and it's £130 in the UK. That's pretty good, I think. A pretty good price to pay for a device uh, as well built as this. Uh, the uh, usability is very good. It's running, as, as it's supplied to me, uh, Android 2.3.4, which is the version that runs on smartphones. It's not a tablet-specific version. Uh, the 7-inch screen is really nice compared to, uh, obviously, to the 3 to 4 inches of your typical smartphone these days. Uh, but a phone it is not. I mean, you clearly wouldn't use this as a phone. And indeed, with this particular one, you couldn't because there is no capability for uh, cellular network. There's no SIM card slot, nothing you can put a SIM card into. There is Wi-Fi, of course, and indeed that is it. It is a Wi-Fi tablet. So uh, Android, as I mentioned, and uh, let's take a look at what it's like inside, as it were. It's on standby. Let's bring it out of standby. And there's your typical Android lock screen. Let's unlock it and just take a little look at what we're seeing here. Well, typical menu, home, a task killer. That's an inbuilt app that comes with it. The, the Wi-Fi strength signal, the cellular, uh, curious enough, even though there isn't, battery, clock, volume, etc. The only thing I've installed is BBC News app. And then um, I'll show you, we've got here hard buttons, menu, depending on what you're doing, where you are. Home button, that takes you always back to the home screen and exits an app. The back button or cancel key, then the soft menu buttons that you see on a home screen. I think, uh, as with typical Android, you can install up to seven or so screens. I've not really done much with this. Uh, it's just got this. Um, the only thing I'd mention in terms of apps, it'll run uh, just about, I, I believe, any app that an Android 2.3.4 device is capable of running. Uh, so you, no worries on that concern. Would it run the same app you're running on your Android smartphone? Yeah, well, yes, it would. It's an Android device. Uh, but one limitation, uh, which I suspect is reflected perhaps in the pricing, i.e. the low pricing, is that you cannot install anything from the Android market. And so if I look at all the apps on here, I'll talk about this in a second, uh, i.e. what's on here. But I suspect that's part of the deal. There is no deal. Uh, you cannot do that. Uh, the little manual that comes with it talks about how you can do it through other places uh, with workarounds, like um, bringing them down to your PC and then installing from your computer that way, things like that, um, which uh, if you're... 
uh, if your preference is the ease with which you can just connect to Android Market with the little app that comes on smartphones and install that way, then you're going to be a bit disappointed with this. I guess it depends how much of a big deal that is for you, whether this device will appeal to you or not. But there are workarounds, and indeed every Android device has an option to permit the installation of Android apps from the non-official place, which is typically the Android market. And this is no different. That is set to enabled. So you will be able to. But in the meantime, what do you get? Well, it comes with a folder called Scroll Apps. And if I tap on that, it gives me a list of apps where the installers are on the machine, and you just tap on these to install them. Uh, the only thing I notice is that some of them are pretty much out of date, but I guess what you do is install them and let it update itself from within the app, if that's what it lets you do. Uh, so um, there's some good ones, nevertheless. I've got the BBC one installed, as I mentioned. Um, it's got uh, Twitter, which I think I actually have installed. Uh, on this device, or maybe I haven't. Uh, but uh, the things you might typically expect to have, Facebook, you've got YouTube, uh, you've got, uh, well, I mentioned Twitter, uh, BBC News, uh, the BBC iPlayer is on here, you've got uh, Flash Player and so forth. So you've got a, a good bunch of things to get you going. Uh, but if, you've got a ver if you do have a preferred app, you'll have to do the workaround uh, to install it. So let's go back out of there. Let's have a look at the menu. I want to show you just uh, some of the stuff about the device. And that's the screen that tells you the Android version, some other information. You'll notice, by the way, how quick and responsive uh, this, uh, the action of this device is. And uh, as I'm just going through the menus, you can see uh, that this is pretty quick. And so it tells us all sorts of interesting things that we can do, as you'd expect to find uh, in an Android app. Uh, let's look at this BBC app. And you can see that uh, loaded up very quick. Uh, this was important to me because uh, in the previous model of this device I had from Storage Options, for some reason the BBC app I installed that kept displaying upside down no matter which way I held the screen. And that was a bug in the system, I reckon. Uh, so this is no, not like that at all. This is very, very good. So uh, I think this quick opinion tour of this device, what I would say is that uh, I think Storage Options have a very nice device available on the, in the marketplace if you're interested in £130 uh, for an Android device running a very recent version of Android. It is upgradable uh, and um, with a choice of simple apps to get you going as a consumption device uh, and the, the clear capability to run the workaround. It's not too tricky once you've tried it to install your favorite apps. Uh, this is definitely up there uh, on a comparative level with any other Android tablet on the market today that costs hundreds of pounds more than this one. And the storage capability is actually not bad at all. So half a gig of memory, uh, four gigs of internal storage, plus expansion of up to 32 gigs with a micro SD card, all for 130 quid, in a seven inch capacitive screen that runs high definition and lets you record high definition video too. This is not bad, I think. So uh, looking at the Storage Options website, we can see that this device is on sale in the UK week beginning 13th of February for delivery. And so there you see it, £129.99, uh, definitely worth doing. The full spec I'll include in the blog post that will accompany this video uh, on my blog uh, and so that you can make your own comparison. And I should probably add a bit more information too. But... Bottom line, uh, for me, uh, this is a handsome device. It's very capable. It's fast based on what I've been using it so far for consumption, like reading news, loading up the browser, uh, Google News, that kind of thing. Not running any heavy apps. Uh, I've used uh, the, um, uh, the camera, uh, the front-facing camera, taken a few pics, done a video. Not bad, although very grainy at 0.3 megapixels, so not something you definitely would just use for... I suspect uh, things like video calls. I haven't tried installing Skype to see whether it would work, uh, but uh, I imagine that would be a useful capability if you could do that. But as I said, what you get for 130 quid is actually not bad at all. So this is definitely something that is worth considering and a vastly superior product to what to the one storage options offered a year ago in the UK. With that, quick tour of the Scroll XL 7-inch tablet PC running Android. 2.3.4. This is Neville Hobson in the UK, signing out.